We're back with Dr. Tom. Always good to see you. Steve, thank you. Uh, just, I wanted to go to Alzheimer's uh, for right. a second here, and there's been a, a hypothesis out there, the beta amyloid hypothesis. Yeah. Well, let's discuss that a little bit and how you see that and how they came to that and, and what, what, what it really is. Well, the amyloid cascade hypothesis, it dates way back to uh, Dr. Aloysius Alzheimer's, upon whom, for whom the disease is named. And he basically saw a couple things, neurofibrillary tangles and senile plaques. And today we realize that the senile plaques contain a specific type of so-called misfolded protein. I mean, our body's full of protein, muscle, everything is, revolves around protein. When it's formed improperly, it's called misfolded protein, and that's what's happening in the brain. And so there was a hunch that this so-called misfolded protein in these plaques is the cause of the disease, and to eliminate that, or its precursor, is to eliminate or prevent the disease. Well, it turns out that in 1907, Dr. Alzheimer said, I don't think that it's the uh, senile plaque, I think it's these uh, neurofibrillary tangles, and moreover, I think it has more to do with uh, microorganism, microorganisms than anything. So fast forward, um, well over a hundred years and there have been every one of the major drug companies Johnson, Johnson, Pfizer, Lilly all developing very sophisticated drugs to stop the formation of beta amyloid at various stages and they've gone through clinical trials with live patients and this I'd say over the last six years every single one has been a failure an abject failure and if you can get down into the nitty-gritty of the trials the patients on the anti-amyloid treatments get worse faster than the patients on placebo. But what's interesting is that in around 2009, I believe, Dr. Tanzi, who's a chaired professor at Harvard Medical School, wrote a very controversial paper that said the beta amyloid, he believes, is an antimicrobial peptide. In simple terms, what he's saying is that the body and the brain in particular, is producing something through the immune system to ward off something that is likely causing Alzheimer's. So that's a protector? It's a protector. So... How can they get that wrong? I mean, that's a little... Now, that's, that's a question. That, that's, that's a, a question, big thing. It's a question I'm not going to touch because, yeah. you know, you see in the brain of Alzheimer's patients this beta amyloid formation. Not always... And sometimes you see it in, in people who don't have cognitive impairment, dementia, or Alzheimer's. And it's, it's not really correlated, but it's there. And it was something to grab onto, and it's something medicine pursued. The sad thing is, after all these definitive defeats of the amyloid cascade hypothesis, there's still companies out there pursuing anti-amyloid uh, therapies, They're just saying, oh, we have to go earlier in the process. So, yeah, I, I think it's um, it's a it's down the wrong path. Tom might be the right path, but looking at what Dr. Tansey's saying and what others are now saying about the nature of this amyloid protein as being an antimicrobial, in other words, it's fighting bacteria, that that's uh, an important approach. And Trump Pro Medical has been using this approach for over a decade. Now, what we do is analyze for precursors to Alzheimer's, and then we do blood tests, looking for inflammation, when we see inflammation, we're looking for um, the types of things that can cause inflammation. Now, if, if I hit your knee with a hammer, you're going to have inflammation from the trauma. But in Alzheimer's, it's a very slowly developing inflammation. So we're talking about something that's really trying really trying to be stealth and below the radar. So looking for some of these bacteria, viruses, and fungi that can cause this very low-grade inflammation is no fool's game. It's, it's not always obvious. So um, that's how medicine can be going wrong to some degree. But I think what we're trying to do is influence the dialogue and the conversation and lean people in the area of neuroinflammation caused by imbalance, lack of homeostasis, bad nutrition, vulnerability to infection, and things of that nature. So having um, 
Dr. McCulley on our advisory team, Dr. McClosey from Switzerland. These are long and strong advocates of our philosophy on the, the genesis, the development of Alzheimer's disease. What you're saying is that, and if I've heard you correctly, is that you're basically 10 years ahead of everybody else. Um, I wish we weren't. <laughs> I wish we weren't, but some of the factors that affect that are the, the tremendous inertia. You know, when you're plowing full steam ahead on the Titanic towards an iceberg, and the, the crow's nest says, you know, turn starboard to port, uh, it's, it's too late. Um, the point is, the drug companies and the healthcare system has invested amazing amounts of time and money into a solution that's failed, and to turn the ship is going to be a long, slow, painful process for them, and um, a lot of a lot of them are hanging on to this philosophy. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to be in your position. Well, we just want to help people. I mean, yeah. I'm here because of my father having a, an Alzheimer's condition, died of it 10 years ago. And I think I know the answers. Obviously, I don't know all the answers, but I know enough of the answers, and my team knows enough of the answers to change the trajectory of a lot of people with this disease. So that's what our goal is. Good. I'm excited for you, and best of luck. Thank you. Yeah.